Hello everyone, it's Adrian. I'm back from the dead. So today I'm going to be talking about 10 transitioning tips I learned during my transition. Yeah, so these are 10 tips. Um, I have experience, what I have learned from like professional um, curly hair, hairstylists, stuff like that. So a disclaimer or whatever. So yeah, let's get into it. Oh, by the way, please excuse the... Anyways, by the way, please excuse the background, whatever. Um, I just moved and we're still trying to, you know, set everything up and yeah, decorate however. Also, I just launched my lingerie brand ooh, called Divine by Darling Lingerie. Um, my Instagram and my website will be in the comments. No. My Instagram and my website will be in the description below. So if you guys want some affordable lingerie, cute ones, whatever, um, I'll have that there. Thank you. Okay, so number one, the main thing that almost every single video that you've seen dealing with transitioning and getting curly hair is do not straighten your hair or bleach or dye your hair. Get rid of your straighteners, get rid of the quick blue bleach, all of that. Because if you are really trying to tra transition um, into getting your curly hair, those things will not help you at all. When I started bleaching my hair, my hair was so, so dry. And oh my gosh it's just a nightmare because detangling like detangling curly hair is already difficult but when you have bleached damaged hair it's like a thousand times worse yeah uh, like i used to have just completely blonde hair but now it's it grew out and it's like at the end so all right number two this is a very surprising fact that I didn't realize, but when I spoke with a hair professional for curly hair, um, they said this is actually a good thing. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, like I said, I'm not a professional. This is just information I've got from professionals. But sulfates are actually good for your hair. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> Not necessarily good, but your hair will sometimes need it. What I mean, before everyone, everyone starts freaking out, I'm, during your beginning stages of transitioning, basically, like, the sulfates um, will help your hair. Like, it's like the proteins, whatever. Like, not necessarily proteins, but stuff that's needed for your hair. During the beginning stages it's actually like good for it um, to help build some strength back into your hair. But once your hair starts getting super curly and you know it's getting coily and whatever, um, you probably do not want to use sulfates at all because it will start to dry out your hair. I hope that makes sense. Um, you guys can definitely, of course, do your research on it. Correct me if I'm wrong. I was actually using sulfates in my hair, like products that had it, and I didn't see any type of like um, damage or anything from it. And I mean, my hair is starting to get uh, its natural curls back, so just a thought. All right, number three. This is something I used to do almost every single day. Please do not do a slick ponytail, especially when it's wet. Doing a slick ponytail every single day, whether it's high up or a low bun, a side bun, other side bun, you do not want to do that every single day because you're just stretching out those curls, especially when you're putting gel because you want it to look good and slick back. You do not want to do that every single day. For me, because I was always stuck in that stage with my hair where I just felt like 
I couldn't do anything with my hair except for putting it in a bun. I was actually damaging the back of my hair. Basically, like, my hair right here would be very, very short, and down here would be, like, long. The worst thing to do especially is when you're doing those slick buns, but wet. Because a lot of times what I would do was get out the shower, like, have some product in my hair just to make sure that my hair isn't dry and it's moisturized, and then I would, like, brush my hair up into a bun like obviously detangle it but brush into a bun while it's still wet and i mean that worked for me because my hair looked slick back and it was good but turns out i was actually damaging my hair from doing that number four be gentle to your hair when you are detangling your hair please try to get a good detangling brush for one um but two also start from your ends uh section it i normally do like four like quadrants uh sections um because i just don't have the patience to just do little by little you should do little by little because um it's better um and more gentle on your hair but i normally just do like yeah four be very very gentle on your hair because the state your hair is in is very very um, brittle and it could cause a lot of breakage if you're super aggressive with it my problem was that I hated having to detangle my hair so I would just rush through it but as I'm rushing through it I'm literally pulling out strands and strands and strands of my hair so yeah be gentle number five trimming your hair it is almost completely impossible to transition your hair um, from dead to curly without trimming your hair. You have to realize your hair is damaged and it needs to heal. Whether it's from heat damage or chemical damage, it's dead. The reason why your hair is staying the same length is because you're not cutting off those dead ends. What's happening is your hair is growing, but because it has those dead ends, it's just breaking off. Like it's just, oh, it's coming, it's coming down, and then it just falls off. A lot of people do big chops, which is really, really awesome and very brave because I know for me, like, I'm just kind of scared to do it because I don't know how I would react, like, to myself. Um, so it's like major props for people who are super confident in themselves and able to do, like, big chops. But for me and other people like me, who wants to just continue having like their same length, then I recommend cutting your hair or trimming your hair um, as much as you can once a month, whatever. Yeah, number six, protein treatments and deep conditioning treatments. They will help you a lot. Personally, because I have very, very dry hair, I just do it once a month because it does like dry hair, but it's also providing the proteins it needs. Sorry, there's like a random shit falling. <laughs> or things, my bad. Uh, deep conditioning treatments, I recommend doing once a week. Um, because it just keeps your hair just moisturized. I always put like a plastic bag over my head. Um, and I leave it in for about like 30-40 minutes. Number seven. Finding the right product for your hair. There's a lot of videos out there recommending all these all these different products that's worked well with their hair. And there could be some really good products that can work for your hair, but you also have to realize that not every product that worked for other people is going to work for you. I was watching a whole bunch of different transitioning videos and a whole bunch of uh oh recommended curly hair products. And I was just buying all of them because I was like, oh, this is going to help my hair. My hair is going to get really curly. And a lot of them either just didn't really help my hair at all. And there was no change even after months and months of using it. But also some of them would either make my hair feel really dry afterwards. Um, and yeah, I just kind of felt like a waste. So don't be like me and buy a ton of products and majority of them just doesn't work for hair just try testing out products like one by one or by two at a time 
and see which one works well for you. On the subject of products, number eight. I may get a lot of hate from this, but I'm just being real. Shea Moisture is not everybody's best friend, especially the Curl Enhancing Smoothie. For so many years, I've watched so many different YouTube videos and everyone always recommends Shea Moisture, Shea Moisture, Shea Moisture, Shea Moisture. And majority of them say, oh, I use the Curl Enhancing Smoothie, Curl Enhancing Smoothie, blah, blah, blah. When I was buying all my products to try for my hair, all I was buying was just Shea Moisture. And one of the main things I bought was a Curl Enhancing Smoothie. And because I was just like, oh, if it works for them, it's gonna work for me. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> it does work for some people, so don't get me wrong. Shea Moisture is probably other people's best friends. Number nine, do not put a lot of products on your hair. When you're doing twist outs, braid outs, or putting your hair in a bun, whatever, try to stick to about like two, maybe three products in your hair because one, when you put a lot of product in your hair, what happens is you get this thing called product buildup. Yes, yes, that's what it's called. But basically like a lot of product just gives a build up into your scalp. Like even though you'll wash your hair weekly or whatever, the buildup in your hair can actually cause a lot of breakage and it can cause a lot of water damage too. Especially when you're putting it in a bun and your hair just stays wet and just filled with a whole bunch of products, it's killing your hair and it's causing breakage. So try not to put a lot of product in your hair. I completely forgot to mention this, which is something that everybody seriously needs to know. I talked a little bit about it right now, um, but basically you need to be careful with water damage. Basically when you have a lot of just moisture just sitting in your hair, um, whether you're doing like twist outs or you have your hair in a bun and you go to sleep and you're and when you wake up your hair is still wet or just very just has a lot of moisture in it it is not good at all for you my problem was that i used to um i used to do that all the time whenever i would braid my hair i'd braid into two but i put a lot of like either product or just water um in my hair and then i would do like some really tight braids and i, I would go to sleep and when I would wake up, uh, my hair would still be wet. I would just be like, whatever, take it out and just do my hair. I didn't realize that that's actually causing a lot of breakage in my hair. So please be careful with that because you do not want to end up like me. Because you know what happened? Because I kept doing that, my hair would be so hard to detangle. And no matter how hard I was brushing, no matter if I finally got it detangled, um, it would just tangle right back up So you do not want to have that problem um, I remember when I Went to a salon and they were trying to detangle my hair. They were able to do it But they had to like really get into it and they finally realized that I had all this like build up or um, just water damage and So they had to put like other stuff in my hair so that my hair would actually detangle and not tangle back up together lastly but certainly not least number 10 these random things in the air it's so weird it's just lint sorry braiding your hair and doing twist outs i found all this lint in the air is pissing me off doing braids and twist outs on my hair i noticed really really helped me a lot of people will recommend doing flexi rods or perm rods and which those things are very helpful but when you have to sleep on those is super uncomfortable and two I just couldn't find the time to do all that because <laughs> I'm very lazy and I'm sure a lot of us are very lazy in doing that I love getting my hair braided all the time 
but obviously do not braid your hair too much like if you're getting box braids or whatever um try to give your hair like a two three week break from having braids like when you take them out because your hair needs to breathe and it doesn't need to be tugged 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 every single week twist outs were very very simple and easy for me to do especially um when i didn't really feel like sitting down and just doing stuff to my hair they're also very easy to sleep on i normally put like a scarf over my head to keep my hair just like moisturized and soft but the twist outs and braids basically really help with get in its curly state like it kind of forces it to become curly all right those are my top 10 tips that i've learned while transitioning my hair i have successfully gotten my hair super super curly and i was so happy with it it looked so beautiful but then i ended up bleaching my hair again so i'm currently on my second transitioning journey so you can probably see like a little bit of dead hair or whatever but luckily it's starting to curl up and whatever i still need to get it to heal but thank you for watching if you guys have some tips for me um please leave them in the comments below i would love to hear if you guys have some product recommendations or just tips that you guys have learned you guys have learned <laughs> um during your journey so yeah bye thanks for watching